Um, so welcome, uh, Dr. Antonio Citro, coming to us from Milan. Um, last time we spoke was September 4th, 2020, deep in the pandemic. We're very excited to um, have you again and listen to all the progress your team has made. Just a quick bio. Oh, well, first, let's uh, you know give us the title of the talk here. It's a directed self-assembly of xenogenic vascularized endocrine pancreas for type 1 diabetes. And then just a little um, short uh, bio sketch here. Dr. Citro re received his doctorate degree in medical biotechnology in tw 2009, and he obtained a PhD in experimental surgery and microsurgery in 2014, both at the University of Pavia. During his first research activity, he discovered the role of CXCR in a half pathway in the islet function and graftment, both in islet transplantation and type 1 diabetes models. This opened a new line of clinical research on the immunomodulation of the islet microenvironment. And since 2016, he has focused his research on regenerative medicine and imported to San Rafael the knowledge of multiple organ engineering and bioreactor customization that he learned at the Harold Ott Laboratory of Organ Engineering at the Harvard Stem Cell Institute in Boston. And organ engineering could both reduce the general organ demand and model diseases ex vivo and is becoming a hot topic to close the gap between in vitro culture and expensive in vivo research. So since 2019, um, he is the project leader at uh, IRCCS, Hospital San Rafael at the Diabetes Research Institute, otherwise known as the DRI. And the aim of his team is to study and characterize the interaction and engraftment between pancreatic islets, endothelial cells, and organ microenvironment with a dedicated focus on cell uh, to extracellular matrix interaction in physio and pathological uh, landscape. So welcome, thank you once again for joining us and um, yeah, take it away. Can't wait to hear so about it. Thank, so thank you, Monica. Thank you to have me again. This is a very great opportunity to share our recent findings. So um, as you mentioned, we are working in organ engineering and uh, as uh, you can understand by the title, actually we are generating scaffold for beta cell replacement type one diabetes landscape. Um, I tried to make like a presentation to give a flavor of the mental, the process that we used to engineer scaffold that in this case was synogenics, vascularized endocrine pancreas. So, oops, sorry. So just a few words, I don't want to go deep in the early transplantation uh, field, but actually I want just to remind that when we isolate normally the islets, uh, from the pancreas, we are completely disassociating the pancreas, disrupting the connection of the islet with extracellular matrix and the vascular network. And this is, of course, a huge problem because when we transplant back islet into the portal vein of a patient, islets require time after transplantation to engineer de novo their own specific microenvironment. And this leads normally to the loss of from 50 to 70 percent of the islet mass. So when we start thinking uh, and, and hypothesizing and yes, scaffold for egg transplantation, we were looking at the original scaffold of the pancreatic islets, so the pancreas. So the, the point is that um, islets normally are really avid from metabolic point of view, and they required and uh, they require a very huge vascular network in order to uh, elicit their function, so fill the glucose and produce, produce accordingly insulin. So, but in terms of engineering perspective, we have to keep in mind that we want to minimize our scaffold. And so we were looking at the minimal requirements of the endocrine niche. So this is actually composed by three main building blocks. So we have the extracellular matrix, of course, the vascular network, and of course, the pancreatic islets. So as uh, was mentioned before, in 2019, we were able to show for the first prototype of our technology that we namely vascularize a lit organ. And this was actually composed by a decellarized rat lung left lobe that have been repopulated with uvex cells in this case and urine pancreatic islets to the trachea. And after seven days of culture in our customized bioreactor, we were able to show compartment integration and also in vitro improvement in terms of insulin secretion. And of course, in vivo, ability to revert the hyperglycemic condition and preserve the normal glycemic status to the entire follow-up. Of course, this kind of approach was like a prototype. And during these years, we 
try to customize this technology in order to bring this approach in a clinical application. We still acknowledge that the, the, the journey is really long, but in order to um, understand which is the, the process that we adapt, we are thinking that actually that our scaffold is composed by three main compartments. So we have the vascular compartment, the accessorial metrics, and of course the endocrine compartment. And all these three compartments can be separately engineered in order to fill this gap. So for the vascular compartment, we can use, for example, autologous subjects and endothelial cells, such as BOEC or IPS that I beat endothelial cells, sorry. And for the endocrine compartment, we can use different cell sources like human islet, neonatal pig islet, or IPS that I beta cells. And still the extracellular matrix can be modified in order to improve, for example, compartment integration or scaffold protection against the auto and aluminum reaction. So in this paper, we were using actually two cell sources. So the BOEC, so the blood growing endothelial cells for subjects and neonatal pig islets. So why these cells? BOEC can be easily isolated from a single peripheral blood sample of 40 ml of, uh, from, of, from the patient. So you can obtain colonies, you can expand them, you can make let them proliferate. And this is a really an advantage because, for example, here in Milan, we have a long waiting list of patients affected by type 1 diabetes that are waiting for a late transplantation. So we have time to get their specific BOEC, expand them, and then biobank them in order to generate scaffold with syngenate vascular network. But why MPIs? So this is a beautiful review from Eko Likert, in which he dissected clearly the difference between adult and neonatal pig islets. So from the, to summarize the difference, the adult pig islets are very committed, mature pancreatic islets. They are able to make their job very easily and they can revert diabetes. But the neonatal pig islets, uh, we can obtain a lot of these islets, but still they are immature but committed pancreatic islets. They normally require from six to eight weeks in vivo maturation to achieve function. So why we select these cell types? Why we decide to combine that? Not only because we want to understand if our platform is flexible enough to work from UVEX cells to BOEC or from rat islet to neonatal pig islet. But the, and, and the, the underlying question was, can the vascularized extracellular matrix improve the functional maturation of immature but committed endocrine cells? So to answer this question, we exactly combine those cell types. So we see BOEC through pulmonary artery and vein in day zero, and then we see neonatal pig islet together with BOEC in the trachea the day after. And after seven days of culture in our customized bioreactor, we evaluate if we were able to engineer what we call xenogenic vascularized endocrine pancreas. So the first point was to understand the, the endocrine compartment maturation. So on the left here, you have the neonatal pig islet culture in a standard condition. On the right, the same islets from the same batch culture in the vet after seven days. As, as you can clearly see in terms of immunofluorescence, there is a huge difference in terms of insulin amount. And this was also confirmed in terms of dynamic insulin secretion tests. So by the fact that we have an organ in a bottle, actually we can perfuse through pulmonary artery, low and high glucose and collect through pulmonary vein the, the outflow and measure insulin. And so we com can compare this dynamic insulin secretion performance together with the normal dynamic insulin secretion test of standard MPIs. And as you can clearly appreciate, not only we have an improvement in terms of overall insulin produced, but we have also and the acquisition of a biphasic insulin secretion kinetics that is normally associated with the mature pancreatic islets or pancreatic islets isolated by uh, adult pancreas, I would say. So we go deep a little bit in the characterization of the endocrine maturation. So we compare after day one and day seven, MPI's culture in standard condition or MPI's culture in the VEP uh, in terms of fluorescence intensity of insulin, glucagon, and somatostatin. And as you can clearly see here, uh, culture in the, island, the MPI's for one day in the vascularized ECM uh, is improving the overall insulin that, in, that we have in the scaffold compared to seven days old. MPI's culture in standard condition. And this difference is even improved after seven days of culture in our system in terms of insulin and glucagon. So taking all together this information, this means that really that the vascularized ECM can be a potent inductor of endocrine functional maturation. But 
We try to go deep a little bit to understand which is the role of the endothelium in this kind of maturation. So it's a matter of the extracellular matrix or the vascular network or the combination of both. So we make very easy experiment in order to dissect these, these things. So we do not measure the insulin secretion test only in the MPIs and in VEB, but we also generate some scaffold in the absence of VOEC. So these islets are in the extracellular matrix without the vascular network. And we live in the culture for seven days, exactly the same protocol. And what we achieved actually was the, that the VEP without BOEC have a little bit of improvement in terms of insulin secretion performance, but still they are uh, inferior in terms of insulin secretion and dynamics compared to fully engineered VEP. So this means really that the combination of the vascularized ECM, it's really a protein inductor of functional maturation, and BOEC are playing a really relevant role in this level of maturation. The second part was to understand the engineering of the vascular structure. So can BOEC engineer like UVEX, the scaffold, in the same way? So we stay for C31, very easy things, and we uh, evaluate that all the scaffold was completely re-engineered. And then we perform what we call a pharyngeography assay. So blue beads were perfused in a, uh, through pulmonary artery that were suspended in a agarose solution at 37 degrees, and then we cast the scaffold in minus 20 in order to understand if beads can be trapped in the vascular tree without spillage in the airspace, just to evaluate if the, the vascular structure is tight and functional. And as you can see here by the beads, they were completely trapped in the vascular tree without any spillage in the airspace, suggesting that this vascular network can drive the perfusion to the scaffold to detail the pancreatic islets. But so um, saying that you have a functional organ ex vivo does not mean that you have a functional organ in vivo. So what we decided to do was to test VAP in vivo and we decided to compare the VAP transplantation in NSG diabetic recipient mice versus MPIs from the same batch of MPIs transplanting kidney capsules or in the intraporta site or in the device list. That was a site introduced by Pepper and Shapiro in, in Nature Biotech some years ago, in which an angiographic catheter is actually placed under the skin of the mice one month in advance before transplantation. So we generate a prevascularized area and then we remove the catheter and we transplant the island. So why we decide to compare these different sites? Because of course, kidney capsule is the standard for pre-island transplantation. So we want to make a reference, of course, compared to VAPS. Intraportal for MPIs was one of the first time in which was able, we were able to perform that. But as you can see, we reduced the number of MPIs for transplantation. So it's 500 versus 4,000. For, for and this is the reason why is the liver is a very limited space for the transplantation for MPIs. But this is an intravascular site. So we want to compare if the intravascular side, we have the same performance of the scaffold, that is a prevascularized scaffold. And we compare with the device less because it's a prevascularized uh, area. So we are comparing a prevascularized site versus a prevascularized organ. The VEP was split into pieces and implanted under the skin. So we tunnel an area in which we implanted the scaffold. So as you can see here by the glycemia curve, accordingly with the literature, as you can see by the black line, kidney capsules revert the hyperglycemic condition from six to nine weeks. So this is the normal time range in which MPIs achieve functional maturation. And I have to say that surprisingly, reducing, non, non, independently by the fact that we have reduced the mass in intraportal site, they, uh, also the liver works exactly in the same direction. Whereas the VEP, as you can clearly see by the blue line, revert the hyperglycemic condition after three days of transplantation. And then it preserves the normal glycemic status till the entire follow up. Wow, um, that's really that's really a remarkable difference. Yeah. So the 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 point here was to understand uh, if the graft is persistent after transplantation. So thanks to our collaborator in Munich, Professor Wolf and Elizabeth Kempter, we have the uh, chance to have IRFP MPIs. So some uh, last year we published together this paper in external transplantation in which we demonstrate that only normal glycemic long term uh, functional mice have a preserved IFP, I, uh, sig IFP signals of the MPIs transplanted. So thanks to the IVIS technology, you can track the, this graph longitudinally and understand which mice has 
a preserved function accordingly to the preserved mass transplant. So, for example, in kidney capsules, there were some mice that were not, not normal glycemic, so we were not able to track the IRFP signal, whereas in some mice, yes. In all the liver, we were able to track the function at nine weeks, and then in the VEP at nine, 14, and 18 weeks, we were able to track the IRFP signals after transplantation. In the same time frame, we explained the graph in some mice, and as you can see here, we have the reversal of the hyperglycemic condition. So actually, we decided to evaluate if the prevascularization is something that is really relevant and strategic for the function of the scaffold. And we decided to provide high level of maturation status. And so we use this maturation protocol and combine these MPIs in the scaffold in the absence of the BOEC. So we engineer the scaffold like, the, like mentioned before in the absence of endothelial cells. And then we transplant in NSG diabetic recipient mice. And as you can see here by the glycemia curve of these mice, here we have improved the engraftment of the scaffold, but still we have function from four to five weeks after transplantation that is not comparable with what we achieve with the full engineered VAP in the presence of BOIC, that is after three days of transplantation. So this information, it's really strategic because it's saying us that the prevascularization is really a key point in order to improve the engraftment in the bioengineering approach in general per se. So then we decided to evaluate the level of vascular integration of the scaffold. So actually, how can interact the scaffold and the, the subcutaneous space together in terms of vascularization? And so on the left is the VEP before prior transplantation. So this is a two pieces prior implantation. And then this is a picture of the VEP after seven days of transplantation. As you can clearly see by the white arrow, we have after seven days capillaries filled with red blood cells. After nine weeks, the picture is even improved. This is the scaffold fully revascularized on the surface. So we decided to track this information. And so we used a specific uh, software, this is a called AngioTool software, that casts the level of the vessel on the surface of the scaffold. And then he translates this information in a computational information. So harvesting the tissue from one to 18 weeks, we were able to track the surface vessel density over the time. And as you can clearly see by the graph, we have an, a significant improvement of the vascular surface from nine, 14 weeks compared to one week after transplantation. And we achieve a plateau at 18 weeks, suggesting that the surface completely revascularized and we have a full engraftment in terms of vascular network. So in conclusion, what we can say is actually that the vascularized endocrine, endocrine pancreas show compared to several control groups. And I now would like only to thank, of course, the, my team at the Pancreas Bioengineering. They are very young, talented scientists. Uh, of course, our collaborators, internal, external collaborators. Lorenzo is our director, the founding agency, and thank you for your kind of attention. Um, thank you, Antonio. I'm so sorry uh, about the, some of these. Uh, we had a little technical difficulty, so I'm not sure where it was coming from. Can you back up to the previous slide for a minute? Yeah, so... Yeah, what, so this, I mean, can you... So, so yeah. basically, this VEP, showed revascularized ECMs in an inductor and functional and uh, functional NPIs maturation. It's a superior yeah. XVBO uh, endocrine maturation function compared to standard NPIs and a superior and immediate function in vivo compared to several control groups. Yeah. So how can how does what you have developed compare to the um, compare contrast to the vertex beta implant product? Yeah, I mean, th this is like, um, uh, yeah, I think that this is a matter of, uh, you know, time of maturation and uh, uh, because the, it's different to say how it can compete. Uh, you know, uh, here we have uh, a structure that we are engrafted prior implantation and we are uh, controlling the microenvironment before implantation. In the case of Vertex product, uh, you are implanting cells in the presence or in the absence of a scaffold, I would say, without a really a control prior. I mean, this is uh, as I understood from by the, of course, the release of the of the information. 
Uh, in this case, what I'm trying to understand also, we are doing other experiments because the MPIs is a kind of mirror of IPS or embryonic stem cell. Let's say something that is maturing over the time. We are understand how you can tune better, let's say the level of maturation of immature but committed endocrine cells. For example, uh, in the same direction, there was a paper um, in bioarchive from Mike Sander that was suggesting that or uh, spheroids generated by IPS drive beta cell can improve their maturation and function together with endo endothelial cells. And this is exactly in the same direction of these scaffolds. So suggesting that if you are, if you can combine, of course, endothelial cells prior and make like a something, let's say a microenvironment control prior implantation, you can obtain a really an improved function compared to the standard that you achieved before. The question, of course, is the GMP application. Of course, so once you introduce different cell types, uh, different elements, you are reducing your power in GMP production because you have to handle with different cell types. So it's a matter to understand if this kind of scaffold can work also in a GMP like grade and understand if it's able to work in this direction. On the other side, I want just to underline one thing, Xeno Islet can be really an alternative. You know, I mean, in, by the fact that pig can be genetically engineered by blastocyst, uh, you can obtain like uh, edited cells without any manipulation after the isolation of the cells. And these, on the other way around, is reducing the manipulation of the islets in a GMP-like grade uh, approach. So it's, you know, uh, two faces of the same coin, I think, and yeah. that can, can be parallel strategy. Yeah, no, that's very, you really sort of did that uh, walkthrough very clearly. Thank you. Um, I wondered also what you thought about how this system might be used to illustrate you know, further illustrate basically the phenotype of the progression to type one diabetes. Have you partnered oh, with yeah. anyone to do that? No, yeah, yeah. I mean, we are, of course, we are using uh, our scaffold uh, um, like in all the perspective that uh, it's possible to imagine. And also we are trying, by the fact that we have an organ in a bottle, actually, uh, we are trying to, you know, study from immunological point of view as well, the kind of reaction that you can have during, for example, a low reaction, for example, in transplantation. It's hard to mimic type one diabetic, let's say progression, because you do not have like all the components together, but um, if there are someone that wants to join and partnership with us to try to combine our approach together with the expertise it would be super because we are of course in uh, looking at the possibility to use our scaffold in this direction. We know that we can perfuse vascularly uh, leukocytes in the structure and then track them very closely to the pancreatic islets. It's a matter to tune the, the, the let's say the, the reaction that you have in the scaffold. This is another story compared to the transplantation. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's oh. something that we want to do. That's good because I have someone in mind <clears throat> that I spoke to last week <laughs> that might be a great collaborator. So I'll, I'll connect you uh, both offline. Um, I think this is a phenomenal um, model system and I can't wait to see where, you know, how it evolves next. Uh, is and Last question is, are, are, I mean, is this group still working very closely with the DRI Miami? Uh, we actually uh, are in connection. I mean, we know we know each other, but we are uh, not working really close. I would love to work close with them. So I know Alicia very well, for example, and this could be like a very joyful collaboration. But I mean, we will try to do so. Well, that sounds great. Yeah, she's wonderful. And uh, with the, you know, the the new leadership um, with Matthias von Herth coming to DRI Miami, you know, maybe some um, yeah. new collaborations will be formed. So all is all is very positive. Um, okay, well, it was great talking to you, Antonio. Again, apologies for some of the little glitches we had, but it was great. Um, great talk. Really interesting. Thanks so and, much. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day.